Hi, I'm the Mangpai. And in this video, I have with me this Behringer mixer that showed up in the trash. Or some might argue it belongs. Just kidding. Please don't sue me. But yeah, it's a pretty cool mixer, seemingly, with a bunch of effects and stuff. So I wouldn't say it's a garbage mixer. It's just a garbage mixer, since it showed up in the garbage. But in this video, I want to explore using a mixer as a synthesizer, which is a technique that I personally am not at all familiar with. I've actually never done it, but I have a friend who uses this technique to great effect. So I asked him to record a video sort of showing me how to do it. And I haven't watched it, so we're gonna play it now and explore simultaneously. And uh, if you want to watch this video without me interrupting, I'm gonna link to his video and channel, and I, I highly suggest you go there instead or after or before uh, <laughs> and watch it. If you are unfamiliar with this technique or if you just wanna check out a really cool person doing really cool person music stuff. But yeah, let's start playing it and see, see, see stuff. I agree with... <laughs> His face. <laughs> no, he's, he's looking at me like you are looking at me. He's looking at me like Uli is looking at us. <laughs> no, let's see. Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Andre and today I'm here in my studio to show you something very interesting. Today I'm gonna make music using just this mixer and nothing else. But ow, well, that's uh, what we are here for. We're gonna use the outputs and the inputs to generate feedbacks that can be used as sound sources for many different uh, purposes. But first of all, a little disclaimer. First, be very careful with the volumes. Since uh, okay. no input technique are Gotta based on the all use the way of down. feedback, usually the sounds can be very, very loud or they can change drastically in a split of a second. Don't connect your no-input mixer directly to your speakers or your headphones and earphones because it can damage uh, your ears. My suggestion is to use uh, different levels of gain staging. For example, for today's demonstration, the setup is based on a no-input mixer, then there is a mixer and then there is an audio interface. So I can control... I'm gonna have to go out, look for a second mixer in the trash. Second, avoid using the phantom power. Every mixer has a button to activate or deactivate the phantom power in the circuit. Be sure to have it turned off because, uh, yeah, it's a voltage that can uh, ruin the How do I know? of your mixer. If it How do I know? <laughs> Honestly, plus 48. It's, it's on oh, now, it's okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> good, good mixer listening to my friend. <laughs> it's very difficult to broke anything using no input techniques. I played no input mixer for the last uh, 10 years and I've never broke anything. Third, if you are in the beginning of your experimentation with no input mixer and you are scared to broke something, even if it's uh, close to impossible. There's a fine line between impossible and close to impossible. And we're gonna find use it. Use an old mixer, a second hand one, something that you don't care too much about and uh, experiment with it. No input techniques can be applied on many different type of electronic devices and electroacoustic instruments in general because the principle of the feedback can be created in many different ways. Today we are gonna focus on the mixer because it's probably the most versatile and also the most uh, interesting for many reasons. So the first step to generate a feedback loop inside of the mixer is yeah, to connect one of the outputs, you for example, and connecting the auxiliary outputs, number one. Oh, can you wait? <laughs> cable with channel number one. What did you do? Now we are going to feed... Aux, right? Aux. Left or right? Okay, we see. We notice. I did a thing. Back the sound from the auxiliary output number one into channel number one. Left. So we are going to turn so on the volume of the aux send number one ah. at the maximum. Hmm. Ah, that's not aux. Aux. Volume. 
in it. We see where he hit us. We're gonna turn on the auxiliary send from channel one. Okay. And then we are gonna turn on also all the way oh. up the gain of channel one Ooh. to generate the feedback loop. Okay. As you can see here, the light is blinking because it's clipping. <laughs> now we're gonna hear the first feedback. Let's turn up a little bit the volume on channel on the main uh, output. Ooh. And then let's turn up the volume on channel number one. Ooh! Square wave! Basic! As you can EQ. hear, there is a sound. This is a percussive sound. Hey, we can Very call it that if you want to. But what happens uh, if we, for Whoa. example, twist one of the yeah. EQ knobs? <laughs> Let's uh, turn a little bit the <laughs> Way ahead one. of you! Oh, we're jamming. Ooh, it changed. What? Let's turn the low one. Hmm. Changed again. This one also has like a compressor thingy. Maybe we can also press a button and uh, use the low cut filter under the 75 hertz that this Whoa. mixer has on the first four channels. <laughs> look at my volume though. Can I just say, <laughs> look at the... <laughs> I mean a mixer and a cable. Cool stuff. Uh, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> but how did he? What did you do to get point, 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 point? Yeah, that's where I'm at. That was uh, a feedback generated inside of the circuit of the mixer and that we can manipulate using the interface of our instrument. Every fader, every knob, every button can change the sound and shape it in different uh, forms from high-pitched uh, tones to rhythmical type of sounds. But this is just the beginning, obviously. Uh, we can create many feedback loops because in a mixer we have a lot of outputs yeah. and a lot of inputs. So we are going to connect the second auxiliary channel in this mixer with this yellow cable. Can I just say to the thing second channel really quickly while we do that? At least for me right now, I mean, I'm keeping this bizarrely low at the moment, but works as a solid gain staging with just. This one I can go... What? Yeah, I can do stuff. Proud. Then we proceed to generate the second feedback, so we will turn up the volume of the second aux sense, sending the channel number two to the second auxiliary output, and then turn up gain. It's still clipping because it's red here, so we can listen to it. Ooh, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> huh? We can turn on the first channel and feed the, the second feedback oh, yeah. inside of the first one. How? Ooh, it started to modulate it. And then if we change some parameters of uh, uh, the second feedback... 
Let me! I'm falling behind! Horn panning! Left, right, which is two. Oh, birds! <laughs> we can shape the sound of the first one. Also, using the faders is a good idea. It can change the sounds as well. Now, what if we add more and more feedback? inside of this mixer, yeah, connecting other outputs to other inputs. It's too much. Let's see what happens. Indeed. Let's see what happens. I don't know. Here. Let's just fade me out like the little octopus creature. Uh, jelly. As you can hear, you can create uh, a lot of uh, Shh, I'm talking very, here. very <laughs> harsh sounds, but also some very, very mellow drones and uh, tones. So, yeah, it's up to you to experiment and explore this technique, uh, add uh, your uh, effects uh, or uh, create your own setup and patch, like in a modular synthesizer system. Of course, the no-input technique can be used also with other type of electronic devices, like for example pedals, you can create a feedback loop inside of a pedal chain. You can do it also digitally, for example I made this VCB rack patch. Yeah, there are many different reasons why no input techniques and using no input mixers is super interesting. If you are a live musician and you are more into the performance size of music, it's a very interesting instrument to play with because you can use it in different situations. For example... <laughs>
But of course, if you're not a live musician and you are more into the production side of music, you can sample everything. You can uh, create your own patches with no input mixers and pedals and effects. And then you can sample everything and use it in your productions. All my last albums are made with no input mixers. The limit is the sky in a certain way. It's up to you to you know, find something interesting and surprising and use it in your own production. But there is also an ethical reason why I decided to work with no input mixing techniques and specifically with no input mixers. I decided to use only second hand, you know, someone has a mixer in the cellar full of uh, dust and rusty because it's old and no one uses it. Uh, so yeah, the idea of taking something that is uh, meaningless and basically trash for someone and giving it a new life and using it to create something new and uh, with a new meaning, it's, uh, for me, it's something very, very important because every mixer has uh, its own history, its own uh, background <laughs> and uh, all the imperfections, all the things that are not working, the channels with the dust, uh, uh, are part of the sound of the mixer in itself. There is also, I think, this romantic uh, uh, probably vision of uh, a mixer as a unique instrument. It's not something that you can buy. It's, uh, it has its own, its own story. And uh, I found this thing very fascinating. At the same time, there is also a very anti-consumeristic, in my opinion, uh, uh, approach to music. You don't need to spend a lot of money to create electronic music and to make sounds. You have to be able to do it with whatever you have under your hands. So yeah, let's just uh, check uh, if someone is throwing away an old mixer from uh, you know your church or your school. For me, that's something really, 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 really important on an ethical level. So that's it uh, for today. I hope you enjoyed this basic information about no input techniques. Uh, of course, there is a whole world in front of you if you want to explore uh, the sounds that you can generate with uh, electronic devices and electroacoustic systems. But yeah, I hope this was useful and inspiring. And uh, yeah, it has something interesting for you also on a conceptual level and on a practical one. Thanks, Simon, for having me here. It was a pleasure to be hosted. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. See you very soon somewhere out there. Bye.